What must I do? Well, first, be grateful that God has allowed you to see the biblical plan of salvation. If you've arrived at the conclusion that you have been wrong about the plan of salvation, that's good news, not bad news. You have an amazing future ahead. So what should you do now? A truly sincere heart, the heart of a child, sees this as an opportunity to learn and to grow. If you thought you had previously been saved by saying a prayer or accepting Christ, like I did, that should have no bearing on your decision to actually obey the gospel for the very first time, now that you know the truth. I can't imagine God being angry because you did not know these things or even rejected them because you didn't understand. God knows you didn't have this information in the past and has obviously just graciously given it to you. He also knows you have it now. God has very patiently brought you to this point in your spiritual journey where you may now obey. Being wrong in the past does not mean you lose anything. You have a treasure chest of experiences and knowledge with which you will be able to help people nobody else could reach. Obey the gospel and you'll be in a position to help so many people who need to hear this truth. Join the fight against Satan's ruse. There are hundreds of churches teaching the correct plan of salvation. Contact me and I'll help you find one in your area. Ooh, wait, we better back up a second. I'm assuming you understand you don't want to continue going to that church which has been mishandling your eternal destiny, right? Yeah, this is a huge issue. You may have years of relationships and be very comfortable in those familiar surroundings. I did tell you there would be radical new changes coming in your life. Changing churches is a huge one. But you know what? It's nothing new. Jesus dealt with this same issue. Remember, his ministry was directed almost exclusively to some of the most religious, sanctified, holy people in the world. These devoted, sincere Jews had been following what their spiritual leaders taught them, and they followed to the best of their ability. Look what Jesus told them about their church after the leaders were upset by one of his sermons. Matthew 15, 12 through 14. Then the disciples came and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They're blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. <laughs> That's pretty straightforward. Jesus says, leave them. But then, what were these religious refugees supposed to do after that? Well, don't forget, there is another side of the coin. Jesus also often said, follow me. Here's a great scripture about Jesus calling people out of their empty, ineffective religion. I'll bet you know this passage, but not for that reason. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is another one of those famous passages which gets pulled out of context all the time and finds itself pasted to the bathroom mirror or the refrigerator. Jesus is not talking about the burdens of life like a soul-sucking career or a difficult marriage. He's not talking about people overworked and tired. He's talking about the burdens imposed by an empty apostate religion. The sincere worshipers of Jesus' day were so loaded down with Jewish rules and regulations, which had absolutely no biblical authority, it was oppressive and wearisome. This ineffective religious system was leaving people empty and lost, sometimes even destitute and devastated. When people follow Jesus, they find rest for their souls. And, and why do they find rest for their souls? Because their sins are gone. If we're truly going to follow Jesus, it will mean making changes which will affect other parts of your life, like joining a discipling church. Take a deep breath, buck it up, 
and begin acting like a disciple. Now, before you ever decide to leave your existing church, I urge you to develop a good relationship with someone who understands the biblical plan of salvation, and of course, that means they can help you be a disciple. Contact the person who invited you to watch these lessons, and if you can't do that, you really should find someone in a church near you who's willing to disciple you and help you navigate this path with courage and grace. Don't just up and leave a church without a spiritual support system in place. Ultimately, because you love people, I think you should explain to your friends, family, and church leaders why you're leaving. That can be pretty challenging, and it would be great if you could talk to people who have been through this themselves. Now, you're, you're not equipped to explain everything, so feel free to point them to our website, www.faththatobeys.org so they can better understand your thinking and your reasons for leaving. Perhaps you'll bring along some really great friends and maybe even an entire congregation. Congregational conversions do happen. Whole churches have been known to give up their traditional beliefs and become disciples. As a result of the things that you've learned in this series, a truly humble student should do what the scriptures call them to do. There's no separate special instructions adjusted for the religious experiences that we've had in the past. The command still echoes from Acts chapter 2. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Don't forget, even the deeply religious people of Peter's day had to obey Peter's prescription. A certain brilliant, deeply devout, super zealous Pharisee comes to mind as a great example, right? So how are you feeling? Are you ready to learn more? If you still have doubts and you took the survey at the beginning of this series, now would be the time to grab it for review. That survey was designed to show you what you believed before you saw the biblical plan of salvation, before you heard all the information that we've presented here. Look at your responses. Did you check anything that would indicate you believed the forgiveness of sins occurred sometime before obedience? That may help you determine where you are spiritually right now. I've presented the biblical plan of salvation to, to many people over the years, and experience tells me that right now is a pretty delicate time for you in your spiritual walk. One of Satan's greatest tricks is to get you to lean heavily on your spiritual resume and use that history as some sort of validation that you just could not have been wrong. Be very careful. If you're referencing the experiences of your past as a defense, that's a dangerous road. If you're a church leader responsible for the souls of your flock and have come to understand and accept the biblical plan of salvation, don't just go off teaching this as some new method or philosophy. The presentation of this material must be done with great patience and careful instruction. Please contact someone with experience to help you gently prepare folks for an amazing change. These are really heavy things to consider, but don't sit and ponder them alone for very long. Do not be a lone wolf. It's always been God's plan that one person teaches another person. The church is about relationships, not information. There are many wonderful churches that have these doctrines on straight. While they might differ in some secondary issues, the plan of salvation is solid and matches the pattern of the New Testament plan established in, in parchment 2,000 years ago. You know, obedience is an act of faith. In fact, in Romans 1.5, it says obedience comes from faith. So if we have an incomplete obedience, how can we possibly have complete faith? Contact the person who invited you to watch this series. If you arrived here without someone inviting you, click the link below, fill out the form on the next page, and we'll connect you with a church in your area which teaches and practices these things. Finally, click the link below and add yourself to our mailing list. Fill out the form and check the appropriate box. From time to time, I update this series and add new lessons. Now, the only way you'll know about the new lessons is through an email update. Well, thanks for watching. God bless you in your efforts to seek God's will. 
dig into the scriptures. Always seek the truth no matter where it might take you. Keep a humble, childlike heart. And let's always be open to the possibility that we could be wrong. Now what are you waiting for? Get up, make that contact, and learn the rest of the details about the amazing biblical plan of salvation. Step out in faith, a faith that obeys.